Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. Welcome to One on One. We're here at the WNET, the Tish, Tish WNET studio. I can get that. I just had an Oreo cookie. I'll admit that. Oh, All right, good. that's what's going on. <laughs> but more importantly, we have Camila. Camila Forbes, who is executive producer of uh, the Apollo Theater, originally from beautiful Chicago, Illinois. That's and right. here. Uh, tell folks what's going on at the Apollo and why it's so important. Um, well, there's a lot going on at the Apollo. You know, a, a lot of people don't realize that we're more than just a historic inst institution. We are a living, breathing, performing arts center um, that's vibrant, um, that has programming going on all throughout the year, uh, multidisciplinary program, high quality uh, program, um, and program that really says something, right? Um, and that's really kind of what we're been focused on, particularly the, this past season. Um, this past season, we've been focused on, you know, focusing on issues that uh, say something about the world around us, and also speaking to a younger generation. For example? Um, for example, um, our season opened up with a piece called We Shall Not Be Moved, uh, which was an opera, ironically so, mm -hmm. at the Apollo, um, with uh, some dynamic creators. Bill T. Jones was the director choreographer. Uh, the librettist was Mark Bamuti Joseph, and the composer was Daniel Bernard Romain. But it was an opera about that was in to, to inspired by the events of the 1985 bombing that happened in, in Philadelphia right. around the MOVE organization. Um, and so they kind of took that moment of inspiration mm. and refashioned it in a contemporary context. Do you mind if see a clip from it? Absolutely. What's it called again? And it's called We Shall Not Be Moved. And we're going to see a clip right now. I come Who was that young man? That's John Holiday. And what he, a voice. He is, he is such a dynamic star, um, passionate singer, um, passionate performer. You know, the Apollo, people think they know, yeah. right? They because think, they've seen some things on television. They've seen The Rock. They've, you know, they, they've seen The Rock. They've seen Amateur Night, that's, oh. right? <laughs> Which still runs today. It since does. 1935, every single Wednesday at 7.30 is Amateur Night. Describe for folks what happens that night. You know, so what, what happens that night, it is, a, um, it is an American Idol like you've never seen, right? It like is, real. It is, it is the original you know, competition show. Um, it, it's a, the original competition show that's been happening since 1935. Mm -hmm. And we've got folks not just from New York City, but folks who fly in internationally to compete on the Apollo stage. Um, repeat folks coming from mm. Japan, um, a lot of folks from Asia, from Europe, um, from the continent and South America, and, and, and as well from around the country. But it's not like the audience participates, right? The audience, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the How engaged? <laughs> In quotations, you got that? How engaged is the Apollo audience the Apollo, in this night? The Apollo audience <laughs> is that fourth character, right? You cannot have a performance at wow. the Apollo without the Apollo audience. That's, that's part of the magic. That's right. They're part of the performance. They are just as much engaged as the person singing, whether you are hitting those high notes or not. Will they let you know? You. They will let you know, and they're there right with, they're with you. <laughs> um, your background. My background. Um, it's interesting because uh, our producers were, were saying this as we're getting ready for the show that as extraordinary as the Apollo's history, the legacy of the Apollo is, hip hop. Yeah. Part of your it, orientation, I don't know, orientation, ridiculous word. Moving the Apollo more toward hip hop, yeah. if you will. Yeah, that's Talk right. About it. Moving the Apollo towards more hip hop and and to, towards a more um, contemporary audience, right? Um, and a younger audience, um, an audience base. Um, that's a big part of, of my background um, and, and 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 what I'm attracted to and 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 my part of my foundation. Um, but also has been a part of the Apollo history for a while, right? Um, I mean, artists like Jay Z and Big Pun have have got their start on the Apollo stage at events like. Like amateur night. Mm. Um, so for us, it's just about how can we be more intentional about that. Um, so you know, most recently we worked with artists like um, we had a presentation with Afropunk, which right now I think is is a huge music festival, um, but movement that has been happening um, based here in New York City, and we collaborated with them around an event called Unapologetically Black, and it was celebrating Unapologetically Black, mm -hmm, celebrating the African American Songbook, um, and it was curated by Robert Glass. 
Jasper, who sits in sort of the jazz hip hop world, um, collaborates a lot with folks like The Roots and Common and Erica Badu. Um, and this evening, he was uh, focused on um, kind of reimagining the African American songbook with the with the revived big band, right? Um, and also with TV folks from TV on the radio and Jill Scott. So it was a really interesting Jill mix. Scott. Yeah, she's a fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. She's fantastic. Let me. Beyond the entertainment, beyond the music, as a cultural yes. institution, the Apollo is? The Apollo is a cultural institution and also a gathering place, right? Um, we've, we've been a gathering place um, since, uh, you know, since its formation as being sort of the heart of Harlem. Mm. Um, so when significant events happen, not only in New York City, but around our country, the passing of significant folks in the African-American entertainment industry, the passing of Michael Jackson, right. of Prince, folks congregate. That's where they go. Under the marquee of That's the Apollo. That's where folks go. That's exactly where folks go. When James Brown passed mm. away, he made it a mandate that I want my body to be laid to rest at the Apollo Theater because that is my home. And that's how artists see it. They see it as a home, a place where they can feel safe, a place where they feel welcome, a place where they feel heard. Um, and, and, and that's what the Apollo always has been. And that's, that's what it always will mm. be as we take it into sort of this next generation. Let me further that real quick. Educational programs as well, go. Absolutely, educational programs. So our educational program is, is quite rich. Um, we focus on career and workforce development. Um, and what that means is we don't necessarily just focus on training the next singer or artist. We focus on training all those folks behind the scenes. Who are the folks making the magic happen? The designers, the producers, um, the stagehands, the lighting designers, the lighting tech, the stage managers. That's who we're training. And our program mm. is, is <clears throat> entitled the Apollo Theater Academy, um, and and we get applicants from all over the city, high school age students, um, and they they cycle up into our young producers club and also into our internship program. Real quick, Uptown Hall, Hall is. Yep, Uptown Hall is a gathering place to, to around civic arts and ideas. Um, it's it's basically you know a, a monthly place, a gathering place of ideas to be exchanged, panel discussions. Good stuff. Yeah. By the way, I would be remiss. You mentioned the folks behind the scenes here at WNET at the Tisch uh, WNT studio here in Lincoln Center. If it were not for the folks behind the scenes, camera people, lighting people, uh, people who manage all kinds of things, audio, Frank, um, our incredible sound guy, and so many other people here, without them, we would never be able to do what we do. That's so right. they never get enough credit, and unlike some of us, they don't seek it. So um, thank you so much for, you so for joining much, us and all the best fantastic. with you and your colleagues at the Apollo. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We'll be right back right after this. Thank you. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by... St. Joseph's Health, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Suez, New Jersey Sharing Network, The Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, The Northward Center, and by Community Food Bank of New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.